This is video help for problems 117 and 118 in section 2.2. Um, if you either didn't complete those or did them incorrectly, I will have turned your homework back to you and you'll get credit for it when you do the, these two right. So the, the directive was to find a and b that would make the function f differentiable. For a function to be differentiable, it must be continuous. And again, it's at a specific spot. In this case, we want differentiability at 2. So that means at 2, the function must be continuous. It also must not have any cusps there. So for us to make that happen with our a and b, we branch off and we do two things. And the first is to force continuity. So what we're going to make sure we do is that the y values, because f of x is y, that where that cubic is at 2, and cubics kind of go like this, and where the parabola, this one takes off at 2, that we need to make sure that it does so smoothly and connected. So I can't have a break in continuity, like have the cubic in there, and then the parabola go like this. I also can't have the cubic um, end here, and then the parabola come down and go like this, because I'll have a cusp. So I'm going to make them meet by doing our continuity force, which means I'll plug two in and say a times two cubed, that y value has to be equal to two squared or four plus b. That gives me eight a has to equal four plus b. Then I go over here. This is just a's and b's that will make the function continuous. Now I need to make sure that although they're meeting, that they do so seamlessly and without a cusp. So their derivatives as you come in from the left have to be equal to the derivatives as you come in from the right. So I told you in your notes to write the derivative from the left has to equal the derivative from the right. The derivative of constant times x cubed is 3 times that constant x squared. That has to equal the derivative of the parabola, which is 2x, because the derivative of b, which is a constant, is 0. These have to be equal at x is equal to 2. So that means 3a times 2 squared will have to be equal to 2 times 2, giving me 12a has to be equal to 4 and an a of 1 third. Once I have the a, which would be 1 third x cubed, I would plug it in over here to get the b, and I'll let you do that on your own. Similarly, this one's done the exact same way. I have the cosine wave meeting up with the line. So there's a cosine wave, and at zero, a line needs to take off. It needs to do so smoothly like that. It can't do it like this, and it can't do it with a gap. So first of all, I will force them to meet seamlessly by forcing the function to be continuous at zero. So the height of the cosine function at zero cosine 0, has to equal the height of the line at x equals 0. So putting that in here, I get b. Cosine of 0, right here is 1. That gave me a direct answer for b. Now, that just made sure that my cosine wave and my line are meeting. What do I mean by that? The cosine wave goes like this. I have a line that's taking off from 0. What I just did is I made sure that that line took off from 1. But is it going like this, like this, like this? Like I obviously need it to um, not make a cusp. So the next thing I do is I say the derivative as I come in from the left must equal the derivative as I come in from the right. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. The derivative from a of ax plus b is just a. This has to happen at that boundary line. So negative sine of 0 has to equal a. Sine of 0 is 0, which means a is 0. So my line that will meet up seamlessly with cosine x is the line y equals 0 x plus b. So then I am done. Um, hopefully that was helpful for you. Um, but it comes down to making sure you verify two criteria, continuity. Once you get an equation for continuity, you need to go get an equation to force the, the derivatives to match up at that point. So make sure you take the derivative, but then plug x in. Have a good one. That's it.